Today is Thursday, November 17th. We have more election results that cement the balance of Congress for the next two years. What's changing? What's staying the same on Capitol Hill? Also, what NATO has determined about the missile strike in Poland and what it means for Russia's war on Ukraine. Plus, what areas of the U.S. are facing an intense snowstorm? What new type of meat the FDA just approved and how it's made? And what to expect from the newly released sequel to a classic holiday movie? Those stories and more coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. It's official. The next two years, there will be a divided government in Washington. More than a week after Election Day, Republicans won the majority of seats in the U.S. House. Of course, this doesn't mean the GOP has all the power, since Democrats still control the Senate and White House. But this gives Republicans the ability to strike down the bills they don't like. And some Republicans have promised to use this new House majority to launch investigations into the Biden administration and the president's family. Still, President Biden says he is ready to work with Republicans. And it looks like he'll probably be working with mostly familiar faces. The current GOP leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, already won his party's nomination to become speaker. And this week, Mitch McConnell was reelected as minority leader in the Senate. He did face a challenge from fellow Republican Senator Rick Scott. And that was the first time McConnell has had a leadership challenger in 15 years. But McConnell ended up getting 37 votes while Scott just got 10. When asked about the future, McConnell said he's also open to compromising with President Biden on new bills, but he said they'd, quote, have to be in the political center to be continued. Even though we've been talking about the next two years in Congress, lawmakers are still working on bills this session. That includes a bipartisan bill that came out of the Me Too movement. The Speak Out Act just passed both chambers of Congress and is now headed to President Biden's desk for his signature. It invalidates non-disclosure agreements that force workers to stay silent about sexual harassment and assault. The law only applies to NDAs that were signed before that kind of incident happens. Still, it could impact a lot of workers. Forbes says more than a third of the American workforce is bound by NDAs. Another bill making moves on Capitol Hill, the Respect for Marriage Act. It would solidify the rights of same-sex and interracial couples to get married and force states to recognize those marriages. Same-sex and interracial marriages are legal already, but only because of the U.S. Supreme Court rulings that could technically be overturned. So this bill would make that less likely. Supporters say it's necessary to keep stable families from living in fear. But people against it say it attacks religious freedoms, since millions of Americans believe marriage should only be between a man and a woman. The bill needs 60 votes to pass the Senate. Yesterday, in a procedural vote, it got 62 yes votes and 37 no's. So it looks like it is going to pass. Senators just have to vote one more time. Assuming the votes do come back the same, it will move on to the House, where similar bills have already passed before, and President Biden says he is ready to sign it into law. Remember that Russian missile that struck Poland this week? A lot of people were concerned it would bring the Western world into a more global conflict. But now NATO and Polish officials say the strike was probably an accident. They say the evidence now shows it was likely fired by Ukrainian forces who were defending their own country against Russian strikes, and they never meant to hit Poland. NATO's leader made it clear there aren't any signs either Russia or Ukraine is wanting to attack NATO countries. That said, Polish and American officials are still investigating. People who live around the Great Lakes are in for a pretty intense snowstorm that could last into the weekend. Extremely cold air is coming down from Canada over the warmer water of the lakes. And when that happens, you get what's known as lake effect snow. So this week, it's coming for parts of Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York State. It could be especially extreme around Buffalo, New York, where the storm could bring thunder snow and up to four inches of snowfall an hour. Forecasters say it's possible people get up to six feet of snow by the end of this weekend. Much more news is still coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. My family's holiday season looks a little different this year because we now have a child we need to entertain. It's actually going to be a lot of fun to see him get excited and be part of the traditions. And when it comes to gifts for him and other kids in our lives, KiwiCo helps make sure we are gifting so much more than just a small box of toys. We are gifting a season of discovery, experiences with loved ones, and a holiday excitement that will last even beyond the holidays, all without having to spend a fortune. If you're not familiar, your child can get super cool, hands-on science, art, and geography projects delivered right to your door every month. 
Kids will be so excited to see these arrive in the mail, and you'll know you're helping to cultivate your child's natural creativity and curiosity. Plus, you won't have to scour stores and websites looking for the perfect gift. KiwiCo does all the hard legwork for you. Give awesome this holiday with KiwiCo. Get your first month free on any crate line at kiwico.com slash newsworthy. That's your first month free at K-I-W-I-C-O, kiwico.com slash newsworthy. Two prominent Ivy League law schools are pulling out of arguably the most recognized list of the best schools in the U.S., despite their dominating statuses. The U.S. News & World Report releases a list of the best colleges and law schools each year, using data submitted by the schools. Yale has topped the list of best law schools for decades, but the university's president announced they will no longer take part. The dean said the ranking system is, quote, profoundly flawed, adding it discourages support for low-income students as well as public interest jobs. U.S. News responded, saying opting out of the list will deprive students of the chance to make well-informed decisions about where to go. Later in the day, Harvard joined Yale in announcing that its law school will also withdraw from the rankings. The founder and former CEO of the failed cryptocurrency platform FTX is revealing more about the fall of the company. FTX imploded last week, filing for bankruptcy as Sam Bankman-Fried resigned as CEO. The 30-year-old founder has become known for lobbying in Washington for cryptocurrency regulations. But in an interview on Twitter with a Vox reporter, Bankman Freed admitted that his lobbying was all PR, revealing he actually believes regulations make everything worse. He also admitted he regrets declaring bankruptcy, saying he should have tried harder to continue to raise money. He said his number one priority right now is to raise the $8 billion he needs to get customers their money back. After Vox published the Twitter DM conversation, Bankman Freed tweeted he did not intend for it to be made public and that he was just venting. Meanwhile, some of the most famous celebrities in the world have been accused of defrauding investors who lost money in the FTX collapse. Tom Brady, Giselle Bündchen, Larry David, Steph Curry, and Naomi Osaka are some of the stars being sued by an investor of the now-bankrupt crypto exchange. The proposed class-action lawsuit filed in Florida states all the stars promoted FTX in some form. Lab-grown meat could soon be on a grocery store shelf near you. For the first time, the FDA has now given the stamp of approval to so-called cultivated meat, meaning the agency considers it safe to eat. The lab-grown meat that was cleared comes from California company Upside Foods. They take cells from animals like chickens and grow them in a controlled environment to produce meat. While plant-based meat has soared in popularity in recent years, so far there is no lab-grown meat available for consumers. Even though getting FDA approval is a big step, Upside Foods still needs to get others to sign off as well, like the Department of Agriculture, for example. And that needs to happen before it can sell the meat. If it all works out, supporters say this could mean more meat with fewer slaughterhouses, offering a more sustainable way for people to enjoy their favorite meals. Frontier Airlines is rolling out a new pass that offers major deals for flexible flyers, and today is the last day to grab it. It's called the Go Wild Annual Flight Pass and comes with an unlimited number of flights at what Frontier calls wildly discounted rates. The Denver-based airline says starting in May of next year, you can book flights to anywhere in the U.S. for just a penny. But here's the catch. You have to book those flights either the day before or day of your trip. Another catch, you'll still have to pay taxes and fees, plus the cost of seat selection and your luggage. And there are some blackout dates during busy times of the year. But if you're up for those last-minute trips, Frontier says this is actually an even better deal than they offer their employees who have to fly standby on last-minute flights. If you're ready to go wild, the annual passes are on sale right now for $599. They'll normally cost nearly $2,000. Starbucks is offering an early holiday gift today only. It's the coffee chain's annual Red Cup Day. Customers who order a holiday or fall beverage will get their drink in a free, reusable 16-ounce red cup. You can get the cup whether you order in person, on the app, or for delivery. Although there is only a limited number of red cups at each location. In an effort to cut back on waste, Starbucks says you can bring back your red cup for future purchases and you'll get a 10-cent discount. Is the 1983 classic A Christmas Story on your list of favorite holiday movies? Well, there's a sequel, nearly 40 years later, streaming on HBO Max as of today. A Christmas Story Christmas takes us back to Cleveland Street and features the return of the original star, Peter Billingsley, as Ralphie. The now grown-up Ralphie has returned to reconcile with the death of his father. In the film, he reconnects with childhood friends in his quest to give his own kids the magical kind of Christmas his old man gave him. And just as Ralphie is set to tell a new Christmas story, 
The iconic house in the holiday classic is up for sale in real life. The Cleveland home is officially on the market. The famous house has been open year-round for tours and overnight stays. No word on the price tag or whether the leg lamp in the window is included. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, thanks to our sponsor. Whether it's journalists working on a big story or engineers innovating the next big tech trend, if you're looking to build a team that shapes headlines in your industry, you need a hiring partner to help you find top talent fast. You need Indeed. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Indeed assessments alone, you can pick from over 100 skills tests and add them right there on your job post. And Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Visit Indeed.com slash Newsworthy to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, now back to Thing to Know Thursday. One of the biggest sporting events in the world kicks off this weekend. So the goal of today's Thing to Know is to break down the Men's World Cup and how it all works. If you've ever watched the World Cup before, then you know what a huge deal it is. The tournament happens every four years, drawing fans from around the world as the best of the best players compete for their home countries. This year, the World Cup is in Qatar, the first Middle Eastern nation to host the event. It's also the smallest nation to ever host the World Cup. All the games will happen within eight stadiums in and around the coastal capital city of Doha. The World Cup usually happens in the summer months, but with the brutal heat of the region, FIFA, soccer's governing body, agreed to move the tournament to this time of year when temperatures hover around a warm 80 degrees. So how does the competition work? The World Cup starts with 32 countries split up into eight groups of four. All countries in their respective groups compete in a pool play format and are awarded points for each win and tie. The two teams from each group with the most points advance to the knockout round of 16. From there, the knockouts continue until it's down to the top two teams that will play each other on December 18th. It all starts on Sunday. Games will be on Fox and Fox Sports 1 in English and Telemundo in Spanish. All right, thank you so much for listening today. We will catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.